Hi everyone, welcome to our channel. This is part 6 video on React.js Red example to consume the GraphQL endpoint using Apollo GraphQL library. So previously we completed the red sample, right? But we have disabled the by default in memory caching. Okay, so in this video, what we will do, we will enable the cache and we rewrite our code. Okay, so first, uh, let's try to rewrite our create operation to utilize the in memory cache. Okay, first, let's go to our application and let me create a new record. Okay, so that you can understand. Okay, I'm creating new record. Okay, now if I click on add button, okay. Since we removed no cache, right? So we won't see our newly created record, okay? So let me create it. See, if you observe, there is no record. And if you observe the network calls, see, here is only create API is we are seeing, but no fetch API. That is because by default, use query try, tries to read the data from the in memory cache. Okay. If I refresh my page, then I will get a new request, right? Because once we refresh, in memory cache will be destroyed. Then we can see our newly created record. Let me reload the page. And you can see my bike newly created record, right? So to overcome this problem by using in memory cache, then we have to update our newly created record into the in memory cache. Okay. So for that, what I will do first, let's go to add toy.js okay so here what i can do here as a variables i can configure one more options okay so this is add toy method right this, this comes from the mutation so here i can pass just like variable graphql variables i can pass another option like update okay so it will take two parameters like cache Okay, that is first parameter and second parameter will be our response object. So data is common root object and what is the response object of this create toy? So for that go to our mutation and here create toy and here this is the name of the response property. So copy this and give it inside of it. Okay, so open the function. So now what I can do, I can use cache property and I can use modify. Okay, so this will update the cache and open object and here specify like fields. Okay, so in, in that fields. Okay, okay. Now I can create a method to read the existing cache information. That method is nothing but in all toys cache. Okay. Use, use query get all toys. What is the response type? All toys, right? So this will be used as a function now because with this variable name, our cache will store. Okay, because it is the fetch fetch for my home page. Okay, so now what I can do? Copy this all toys name from get all toys query command. Okay, and just go to our add toy. Add it here and add it like a function. And by default, it will input all the existing data. Okay. So with optional empty array. Okay. Now, here what I can do my newly created record. Right. So, what is my newly created? This is the command. Right. So, I am expecting all the properties as a response, single object. I will create single object that object I am expecting as a response right now what I can do here the inside of the add toys 
I will add them like a new fragment. Okay, fragments is in pieces. Okay, piece of query. So constant new toy ref. I'm trying to create a new GraphQL instance of my newly created item. Here it is a normal JSON object, right? I am converting into the uh, GraphQL type. Okay, so what I can do, I can use here cache again and I can write a fragment. Okay, so here for the data property, I can pass my create object directly. Okay, that is my newly created response type, response variable, right? This is my API response. So what will happen means whenever the mutation is successful at the servers, once the response is re re received, this update method gets executed. See here we are listening right for the add toy promise then before executing this method, once the API is successful, update method will execute. After update method, this then gets executed. Okay. And here for data as in our newly created record. And here we are going to create a fragment. Okay. So now we have to create a fragment. Okay. So fragment is a, a GraphQL command. Okay. GQL. Use GQL. Okay. We have to import the namespace. See it is imported or not. Okay. Let's add GQL here. Okay. Open back ticks. And frame or fragment. So here fragment is nothing but a GraphQL syntax. So I can write like a fragment. It is a new piece in the array. I want to put this new piece. So I am writing like a fragment. Okay. One piece. So fragment. I will name it like this is newly new toy. Okay. On toy. I am defining a type. Okay. Any type you can mention here. Okay. And this is my fragment name. Okay. So here open braces and I have to define all the properties. Okay. So copy all these. I am fragmenting. Okay. Add it here. Okay. Format them. So this will create the new fragment of the existing. A fragment so I can push into the existing GraphQL data. Okay, for that, I finally what I have to do, I will return array and first inject the existing data, right? And then I have to push my new toy ref. Okay, so that's it. I am adding my newly created object into the data. See, update method gets immediately executed once the API is successful. And cache that gives control over in memory cache of our GraphQL client. And this is our API response. Newly created object will be in this variable. Now, using cache.modify under the fields, we are defining which object we want to update. So, by default, in all toys, we are using the get all query, right? So all toys, right? So what is the response object? This one. So with this name only, it will be stored into the in-memory cache. So to retrieve the data from the in-memory cache, we have to call that response property name as object. So automatically cache will inject the existing data into it. If there is no data, empty array will be assigned to it. Okay. And next we are defining a new GraphQL fragment, our newly created record, and finally pushing into the existing data. Okay. So save it and if I try to create a new object now whenever object is saved successfully and navigated back to my home page then I can see my newly created record immediately because my newly created record I am updated it in in memory cache also. Okay, so let me uh, reload the page first. Okay, I have four toys right? let me add one more toy like a robo okay and clear network calls now if i click on add button okay i navigate back to home page if i scroll down see 
my newly created record is on my home page. If I check network calls, there is no get network call. This is the create network call. That means successfully I am able to push my data into the cache, newly created record into the in memory cache. Okay, that is how cache will work. Okay, just like add, we can do same thing for update. Okay, let me uh, show you a brief code. So copy this update method and go to our edit. So here let's add that update method since it is update, right? Uh, so what I have to do means so it won't be a create. So for update, what it will be the update, you can see it is update toy. Okay and add it here and now you can create a new instance and here you have to pass data update toy okay so update toy but already existing data you have to remove it right so to remove it i can pass one more field here like create here one object and instead of that object i can re read a variable like read field so this will help to uh, get the ID, okay? Any field from the existing object while we loop it, okay? So now I have to remove the my existing data from the cache, right? So for that, what I will do? Existing data, okay, equal to existing data filter, okay? So I, what I will do? I can use the read field to obtain the value from the toy. Okay, so read field and specify the property I want to read. It is the ID right in our response. And second parameter, we should pass the iterating object. So it will pops out the value of the looping object and it should be compared with our uh, update toy dot ID because it is a simple JSON object, right? and comparing it so here i don't want that object to exist in the existing data okay i am removing the old data object and here i am updating the new data object like this we have to implement the for update operation same way for delete also so i can copy this method okay so delete is implemented in our all toys set. Go to all toys and here where is our delete confirmation handler and delete toy under the variables configure our update method. Okay. I configured the update method. So here just to remove the item, right? So I can remove there is no right fragment. Okay. And here I need read field okay and here it is not update toy because what is the mutation type here remove toy by id so remove toy by id type is remove toy by id okay so let's go to our all toys so here in the response object pass it okay so edit toy I haven't given anything update pass it here and here we are excluding right same logic we will use but here we simply return the existing toy that means after deleting the data from the server we are updating cache also explicitly uh, to remove okay so like this you can use in memory cache i hope this video delivered some useful content to you all if if you like the video please do support me by subscribing to my channel soon we are going to meet with new content until then signing off